everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. This is part three of our how to do a fabric top, and in this case, back uh, guitar, or again, in this case, bass body. Um, so in this episode, we are gonna try to get the camera to not shine back at you. Um, in this episode, we are going to um, sand the top of this, and we are going to take this kind of blob and turn it into a P-Base shape. Now this is gonna be a five string P-Base, so my template is about a quarter of an inch um, wider this direction than the standard P-Base. So let's jump right in. The first thing we're gonna do is um, pull off this, uh, this adapter piece so it fits in our spray rig, and we're going to sand the top and back smooth because there's a bunch of kind of fuzzy orange peely bits in this and we are going to take all that stuff away so that our template can stick properly. Let's do it! One of the questions that I get a lot um, about this process is can I use epoxy instead of the Simtex sealer? And the answer is, like I've said so many times before, I really don't know because I've never tried it. But what I do know about the Simtex sealer is it's called Easy Sanding Sealer for a reason. Um, because it's going to sand super, super easy. And this guitar kind of has a bunch of um, fuzzy bits on it because it's fabric. And um, we're going to sand all of that stuff back so that we have a smooth surface to mount our template to so we can buzz the outline on my beloved pin router. So, um, uh, I'm going to attack it with a piece of 220 and uh, everything's going to be cool. Okay, I've got the body, top and back, sanded to 220, and um, I've gone ahead and just kind of wiped this off so that there's not a bunch of dust all over it. Um, the, uh, I'm not going for a full level sand here, I really just want to get something smooth that double stick tape can stick to so that I don't have a bunch of bumps. You can still see, let's see if I can get this, some of this in the camera, you can still see there's some low patches here, and I don't really care about those right now. Um, because like I said, this is going to get more sealer and it's going to get more everything else. So really we just want to have um, something more or less flat that, the, uh, that will make the next steps easier. And we're going to do those next steps right now. Here is the template that we are going to use for our five string bass. Like I said, this was uh, basically just started out as um, a piece of MDF and I drew the uh, P bass template on it and then scooched it so that it's a quarter of an inch uh, wider this way. So we are going to adhere this to um, to our body and attack it with my beloved pin router and the bandsaw and maybe even the shaper. I haven't decided how we're going to do this yet. So um, let's get it stuck on and let's start making dust. So I've got my template double stick taped down but I want to hedge my bets and so I'm going to put some screws to uh, help hold everything help hold everything together and this screw is going to be covered up by a plate and this screw is going to be where the control cavity goes, so it will just sort of disappear too. So that should go a long way in keeping everything nice and stable, along with the double stick tape that's already on the body. So let's head over to my beloved pin router. Okay, everybody who's watched my videos before knows that my beloved pin router is one of my favorite tools. And the reason they call it a pin router is because there is a pin that protrudes up from the table that will ride on the template here like this. 
and this cutter is indexed as close as it can be to this pin. Now there's probably a little bit of run out, but it's not too bad. Um, so what we are going to do is we are going to just take a pass, maybe like a quarter or probably more like an eighth inch deep to establish where the lines go. And then we're going to go over to the bandsaw and we're gonna cut those out so we're not having to um, uh, machine all of this mess away. Okay, now you can get an idea of what this base is going to look like. And we are going to go over to the bandsaw and we are going to trim out all of this stuff here so we're not having to cut it with the, um, uh, with the pin router blade. Uh, now you could probably just leave all this stuff and go for it, but remember what I said about run out on the pin router blade. Unless your pin router blade is exactly spot on, you're going to be cutting, in some cases, um, you know, almost almost two inches deep with uh, with a half inch cutter bit. I do not recommend that. So we're just going to trim this out nice, and that way we're just buzzing off just the littlest tiny bit with the pin router. And um, let's do it. Okay, I've got my template attached to some uh, paddles here and I'm going to run it through my shaper with a helical cutting bit because, well, it's way faster than doing it on the pin router. I will have to come back and get some of these areas where the shaper can't get on, uh, on the pin router, but we're going to get the most of it here in one fell swoop. The other advantage to using the shaper instead of the pin router is since it cuts it all at one time, it's nice and smooth on the edge there. So that is pretty neat. Um, I would not try this with your router table. I'm going to actually be doing a video on, uh, on the shaper here later today maybe and um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So now we'll go over to the pin router and we'll, we'll get these guys the rest of the way cut out and um, We'll maybe put a round over on this and uh, kind of finish up for today. Okay, so let's recap what we've done so far. We've taken a rough blank and sanded the front and back with 220 just to get everything a little smoother than it was. And then we used several high speed cutting tools. We used the pin router, we used the bandsaw, we used the shaper, and then we used the pin router again. And we even used the drill to drill through some of these holes. So what I'm trying to get at is this Simtex sealer with um, fabric, cotton fabric, is actually pretty resilient to using power tools with. Um, so if you want to go ahead and do this our way, that uh, go ahead and do so with confidence. If you already have a body that's already cut out, you don't have to use high-speed cutting tools. You can use sandpaper and uh, X-Acto knife if you want. Um, but just to, to, to make sure everybody knows, high-speed cutting tools are good to go with, uh, with this process, and now you know. So I think I want to go ahead and wrap this video up for today because the next couple steps we uh, are going to take some time and I'm going to do a little mini tutorial in the next video where I show you how to make a template for this neck pocket and the pickup pocket because the neck is, uh, is custom and so is the pickup. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here is the five string 
neck for this project and because it's a five string, um, it's going to be a different uh, um, heel area than a four string. And because it's flat on the end and not curved like the, uh, like the Fender five string necks, I need to make a custom template for it. This guy is still square on the back. Here you can see. So that's cool. Um, but uh, you know, five string necks aren't exactly as standardized as the four string necks are. So you know, you could take a fender neck and bolt it onto something else. And there's 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 lots of different uh, four string necks that will from go to company to company and will work. Five string necks aren't quite as uh, universal. I also need to make a template for this super cool Centel bass pickup. This is a split coil, but in a soap bar kind of. Uh, kind of housing, you can see the split coil there. So this is like, would be like a P-Bass pickup. Um, Jerry Centel winds all of our bass pickups for us and he is the man. Um, you can basically call him up and say, I want some crazy ass thing and he will make it for you. So if you're looking for a super cool bass pickup, give Jerry Centel a call. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. If you guys like the video, give us the thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button now. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. And by the way, I've noticed there's a lot of people who are sending me fairly complex questions who haven't subscribed to the channel. Um, if you if you don't if you haven't subscribed yet and you ask me one of those questions, I'm going to go look and see if you're a subscriber to my channel um, because because you need to have a little bit of skin in the game. At least subscribe if you're going to ask me a question. Um, so uh, yeah, so hit that subscribe button, leave all the questions. You know the, you know the drill. Uh, if you appreciate content like this, you might want to consider going over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Uh, this channel is entirely viewer funded. We do not take any ad revenue from YouTube. And, um, you know, so even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you cool content like this. Let's see. Um, if you can't do Patreon, we totally understand. And even if you can, uh, one of the other ways that you can help us out is to share this video and all of our other videos as many places as you like. So, uh, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody. I